Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and we're going to be looking at line management and ERM. And this is the second cornerstone of enterprise risk management. So let's see what um, James Lamb has to say about it. He's the guy who's writing the enterprise risk textbook, and he gives a definition of what line management is. He says it's the management responsible for the business units that are the primary source of business financial and operational risk. Um, if you want an alternative definition from Wikipedia, I got line management is a business term to describe the administration of activities that contribute directly to the output of products or services. So if we want to think of this visually, uh, remember in the last video I spoke about the board of directors and they were like the golden triangle that oversees everything in the business. The line managers are almost the guys that are controlling the vertical production lines within the company. They like the engine room and they make sure everything works. Um, so yeah, let's talk more about line managers. And what we're going to see is that the business or businesses have this challenge to establish an independent risk function without creating an adversary relationship between line and risk units. So businesses understand that they they have your engine room, that they're making the money, they're doing all the business, but we need to now set up a risk component. We need to make sure that these guys aren't taking unnecessary risks. So one of the things that they did is they created this technique known as the offensive and defensive method. Okay, And this was a really dumb idea um, with regards to certain businesses. Um, the reason I say it's really dumb is I'll give you a quick little case study. There was a bank that had two separate teams. So it had its line uh, unit or line managers and their task was to issue loans. The more loans they issued, the more money they got paid. Their incentive was business volume, issue loans, issue loans. Okay, They were known as the offensive of the company. Then you had the risk unit, which was the defensive part. Okay, So, sorry, we've got the... The offensive team to issue loans. Then we had the risk unit which were the defensive players and their objective was to avoid defaults. So the idea was simple. We're going to get a whole bunch of guys, they're going to focus on issuing loans. They're going to have some loans that they want to issue and before they get issued they go through the defensive team which then sorts through and makes sure that there isn't any unnecessary risk and they ensure the quality and then those get passed through. This broke down completely because the two teams, as we see in this picture, competed against each other. The guys who wanted to issue the loans, they didn't, give, they didn't really matter about the quality of the loans because they were rewarded on the volume of the loans they issued. So what they would do is they would, they would misreport the risk um, when they went to these, uh, the guys who checked to see if the risk was compatible. They would understate it or they wouldn't mention that the person that they're learning the risk of the loan to doesn't have a job. Whereas the defensive or the risk unit company, they were, they were getting paid um, depending on the quality and they got a bonus if there weren't any defaults. So what they would do is even if a loan was legitimate, they would have an incentive to block letting it going through because if it went bad, they got punished. But if it was good, they didn't get any reward. So much so that this bank actually started to crumble and it was taken over by a competitor bank. So this whole offensive and defensive system didn't really work out for the financial system. Um, another strategy is to have your risk unit set a whole bunch of policies and police them. So your risk unit is thinking, think of them as the police, okay? And your line managers are the people um, that are not police. And they can do whatever they want as long as they don't overstep a boundary set by the police. So a certain example would be you cannot invest more than 5% of your capital in any one company. You know, you must ensure diversification. There would be rules that you can't trade this or you can't trade that or you must do this, you must do that. And the, the business guys are free to do whatever as long as they don't infringe on these um, laws. The problem though is that Sometimes there was, you know, an area of business or something where policies or laws had yet to be developed because this is a new set of business. And we'd find that the line managers 
though they would follow the, the letter of the law, they wouldn't follow the spirit. They didn't understand this whole idea that these laws are here to protect us. They saw it as, and they tried to figure out ways to work around it. So this strategy of policies and policing them also didn't really work out. What they found is one of the best ways to do it is to set up what they call the partnership model. Okay? And in the partnership model, the risk management is fully integrated into the business as opposed to being you know, strictly a corporate oversight function. And what's nice about this is it lets them work together. Okay, So then the whole business process where products are being developed and the pricing and investment decisions, they're being made together. And what's nice about this, it becomes almost like a client and consultant relationship. And the, the business guys seek to use the risk manager's expertise to improve their business performance. And what's nice about this is it seems as if they have the incentive to work together to address risk management. However, we do see some problems when we come to this nice, happy, family type idea. Because yes, you've got the risk unit, think of these as the guys on that side, and you've got the line unit. Okay? Now the risk unit is very much focused on long-term performance, which sometimes means they will hinder short-term goals that the business unit or the line unit wants to pursue. Also, the line unit might have some you know, business needs that they really need to get done, and they cannot be, get done because of these inflexible policies. So sometimes they need the, the risk guys to just understand how the business works rather than just to give them academic or theoretical uh, formulas on how it's done. And managing this relationship is, is difficult. And so sometimes you'll need um, a chief risk officer to oversight. Uh, you know, he might be the guy in the middle uh, just to make sure everybody is working together as a team because that's the whole thing about a business. You are supposed to work together, not against each other. But some companies make that really difficult by having the incentives um, on two different goals. Because so, I mean, if we look here, the, the big solution to all these problems is just to align the incentives on the employees. Um, but what we've seen in, in business is that sometimes we have conflicting um, criteria. So sometimes you know, we might focus on growth uh, for some guys, and other guys, they focus on quality. Um, the one team might focus on volume, where the other focuses on minimizing errors. The other might focus on maximizing return, whereas the other might focus on minimizing deviations. And if we have all the blue on the one guy and all the yellow on the other guy, there is going to be some conflict within the business. So the big trick is to figure out how to align the incentives. And that's quite a tricky thing to do. I mean, it's not uh, something that just comes comes naturally. But what we're going to do is we are going to see, because I don't want this video to go on for too long, is we're going to see in the next video I upload, um, we're going to look at how risk management and business processes can work together. And this is, would be something that the chief risk officer would um, oversee and push the CEO to, to implement. And yeah, so check out the next video. I have already made it, so I'm going to be uploading both these videos at the same time. And then, yeah, that's all for this video. And I just want to leave you guys off with a little picture I made. Um, I'm thinking of pursuing or going into a little bit more of art, abstract art with shapes and vectors and illustrations. So please let me know in the comment section what you think of my art. Is it nice? Is it not nice? Be honest. Um, I can take criticism. But yeah, that's all I have time for today. Thanks guys for watching. Cheers.